This week's episode is sponsored for dailygiving.org. A great organization gives out charity on your behalf. What a better, can you think of a better way to give someone Shalach Manus this year in Purim? Send them a note. I just signed you up on you, in your honor to be given charity on your behalf. That's phenomenal. Dailygiving.org, dailygiving.org. So we're at Purim now. And, you know, I remember growing up hearing this concept and it really threw me. When you think about holidays, right? If I would ask you right now, as you're listening to this, rank the holidays for me in order of holiness. Like what's the holiest to the least holy, right? What would you say? Personally, I'd be like, listen, holiness, holiest, Yom Kippur, no question. Takes the cake. You, get to, you, you act like an angel. You pray all day, right? You don't eat. It's holy. Bottom of the list, Purim, right? Like Purim feels like the recess period, right? Doesn't it like God's like, listen, you worked really hard in Yom Kippur and Pesach and Rosh Hashanah. You know what? You, you need some recess. Like you got to go to the yard. So like take Purim, eat, drink, and be merry. That's not a very Jewish holiday thing, but all right, you could have one too, right? You eat, you drink, you get food. It's like a, it's a party. That's not holy. The Arizal's is something amazing. In fact, Purim is potentially the, the holiest. Purim is number one over Yom Kippur. There's a hint to it because Yom Kippur is short for Yom Kippurim, which is literally in Hebrew, a day like Purim. What's so holy about Purim? It doesn't seem holy to me. Why does it seem holy to one of the holiest people that ever walked the face of this earth? So let's talk about Purim for a minute. The story of Purim, in order to understand what they did, what the Jews did, you have to get into the historical context of it. The story of Purim took place in the Persian Empire. Now, for me and you, that's totally normal because we have been living in exile for 2,000 years. Even if you're living in Israel right now, the diaspora experience for the Jew is so normal. We don't expect to have the king be a Jew. We don't expect the, na- the land to be t- keeping our holidays. We expect to be the minority. The first time that ever happened in a real way was this story. Before Purim, the Jews spent their lives in Israel. They've been in Israel since the time of Joshua. And understand that right before their exile, they had a temple that was miraculous. They had a Jewish king. They had prophets. They lived with God. God was poofing miracles all the time. Every prophet was just a miracle. And then a man named Nebuchadnezzar showed up, 586 BCE, king of Babylonia, exiled them, destroyed the temple. And then between that and the Jews being there and his descendants to Belshazzar and then Persian Medes, and ultimately now they're in a new empire called the Persian Empire with Ahasuerus. They're alone. And then all of a sudden Haman shows up the man who passes a decree to annihilate the Jews. Let me ask you a question. What do you think they're thinking right now? All right, like we're good. God's going to hook us up, right? I'm sure his arm is going to just, you know, get locked into place, right? That's happened before. I'm sure that um, God's got tricks. I don't know. He's, he's, he'll do something. Locusts, you know, blood. I mean, he's done this before. Like we've been out before and God showed up and been like, hey, you're going to kill my people? Like those are my people. The Jews are looking like, all right, like, it's almost, ha- like, hello, like, he's the bad guy, like, can you, I mean, we're expecting, like, some mir- some miracle in 2020 for COVID, like, can you imagine? They're sitting around going, like, what do you got? Like, let's do this. Nothing happens. Nothing. There was a minister, we had Esther in there. She walks in. The law, by the way, to kill the Jews that was going to take place in 11 months, that law just basically allowed us to defend ourselves. On Purim, we went to war. God didn't show up. 
and like, you know, wipe out the army with a plague. We went to war with swords and won. One minister, Haman, bad guy. One minister, Esther, good person, Mordechai. Politics, Ahasuer didn't die like Paro. Ahasuer stayed king. This holiday is as secular as it gets. It's in a place out of Israel with Persian names. It's minister versus minister. And we went to war. We've been to war before. We've been to war since. This story probably played out a hundred times since Purim. So why is it so special for? Because this is the first time in our history where God put us in a situation and didn't come in and put on his Superman cape and save the day. He went behind the shadows and pulled the strings in a hidden way. You know what the Jews did? The most special thing they could ever have done. They did something so special that According to the commentators, it was even holier than when they got the Torah for the first time. They accepted God with love, which means, in my opinion, they looked around and chose to, to realize that it was God. They could have said, well, that was a coincidence. Oh, come on. She was so beautiful. That's why she became queen. Okay, it worked out that the fact that Haman made the gallows the night before he saw Mordechai, and that's why he got put on. And then that's otherwise he probably would have survived. Yeah, there was a law in the beginning that made it look. Sure, yeah, I mean, it happens. We get lucky. You know, we found out that we got a tip that the Egyptian army was on a, a different uh, shift. And so we we're able to go out and knock out the whole Egyptian fleet in 1967. And that's why we were. Okay, so it worked out that somebody heard something, did something. Uh, come on. Come on. Come on. If God would have been there, he would have blew the place up. I know how God rolls. It wouldn't have just been a coincidence. And this is the first time that God changed the playbook. So he told us, I'm never leaving you, but you may see me. You have to look a little harder for me. You're in exile now. When you're in exile, I don't operate the way I used to operate in Israel. I can't. I mean, I can, but I won't because... Part of the relationship is you looking for me. On Purim, the Jews looked for God and saw that every coincidence was really a puzzle orchestrated by the divine. You don't want to know what holiness is? I saw this beautiful article at OU.org. They speak about the concept of Kiddushin. In Hebrew, holiness means Kadosh. What it means is to be designated. When you marry somebody, it's called Kiddushin. What you say is, I'm designating you. I have eyes for you. Everyone else, I just have you. When you go into Shabbat, you're, you make Kiddush. You're saying the whole world and the work. It's just you, God. When you take everything and you choose one thing, it's connected to the word Kedusha, Kadosh. Tell me what's holier. God poofing miracles and us going, there's God, or God's thing in the shadows and us going, there's God. That's Purim. That's what Arizal says. Don't get lost with the whole drink. No, no, no. This is holiness. And that's the challenge for us, this Purim. It's not just to have fun. We should have fun. We deserve it. It's We need to be Purim. We need to have Purim in our lives. We need to put on our own Purim glasses. Turn back into our lives and go, that just didn't just happen. God is there. He's pulling. That's how I ended up here. And this is why this happened and that happened. When you look at your life and you put on Purim glasses, you tap into a level of holiness that in some ways is so much greater. You're able to connect to the true love of God in the normal day of your life. That's the power of Purim. And that's holiness every day of the week.